Hello and welcome to Veterans Medals Workshop. I'm Frank Foster, your host and an old soldier and the author and publisher of a number of books on military awards. And today I want to talk to you about the medals and ribbons of the United States Air Force. And uh, well, because the Air Force has been around for over 100 years now. It started out as the Army Air Service in 1914, going down to help General Pershing uh, go after Pancho Villa on the Mexican uh, border. The only thing that was really out there that was good on um, Air Force uh, medals and ribbons were Tony Aldeball's books on the decorations and medals of the United States Air Force. Uh, Colonel Aldeball actually wrote a second edition of his book and uh, they were really good, but the last book was published in 1999 and since then, it's gone out of print. It's no longer available. And unfortunately, Tony uh, has passed away. But today, what we're going to talk about is a brand new book. It's out called The Medals and Ribbons of the United States Air Force. It's over 200 pages in beautiful, full color. And it's going to be your Rosetta Stone to answering all the questions you have about United States Air Force ribbons and medals. So uh, what I'd like to do now is take a copy that I've uh, you know, did a spiral binding on like we've done before and walk you through the book. So uh, let's go take a look. What I'd like to do now is to give you an overview of the actual book. Uh, I've taken the book, which is hardback, and put a spiral binding on it to make it easier to see and easier to walk through. And it opens with a little overview of Air Force and military awards and traces back the symbolism to ancient Rome. And then what it does is it goes through and gives a, uh, I'd say an overview of the evolution of United States military awards starting with the revolution and going through the Civil War up through the beginning of the uh, Army Air Service where Lieutenant Thomas uh, Selfridge was the first uh, Army aviator and he was killed in a crash in 1908. Uh, then he gives a little overview of World War One, World War Two, and the various campaign areas. The different medals issued for World War Two, the post-World War Two and the Cold War, the Korean War, the Vietnam War and the basic medals issued for it. Uh, Desert Storm, Desert Shield, Liberation of Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, the Global War on Terror, Kosovo, a little overview of how the NATO medals fit in. And then it goes to explain the types of military medals and ribbons, the military medal variations. And then a really unique section of the book uh, lays out the various campaign medals that were awarded for each major conflict, for example, in World War II. And of course, here for the Army Air Force, it shows the Army Good Conduct Medal. And these are the basic campaign medals for Korea, Vietnam, Southwest Asia, Bosnia, Kosovo, Afghanistan, and the Iraq campaign medals um, that you would expect a veteran who served in those campaigns to have received. Oh really exceptionally neat presentation here is examples on how to display a veteran's medal and it shows how you would use the patches of pictures um, the insignia and how the medals would be presented along with a nameplate and it gives you the details on how to do that and then it gets into very specific detail and says okay here's a world war ii eighth air force display case these are the insignia and the medals that you would expect to see the World War II right. Here are all the patches of the Army Air Force. And this is particularly unique. For example, uh, this shows an um, air crewman, a bombardier, or an aerial gunner, actually, from the 9th Air Force that was shot down and was a prisoner of war as a German Stalag ID tag and his prisoner of war medal. Uh, another example case of uh, in the Pacific Theater, Korean War, Vietnam, Vietnam pilot, Vietnam airman, the Cold War, Desert Storm, Desert Shield, 
uh, Afghanistan, Iraq. It also goes into very good detail on how you can claim your medals, say uh, your dad's medals or your grandfather's medals or even your own uh, if you don't have them all, especially if you served in Korea and never got the new Korean service medal. Uh, now, what's really interesting showing the variations of Air Force medals and then how the different medals and ribbons were worn on the different uniforms of World War II, Korea, and now today. There are examples of how active duty and reserves of the United States Air Force would wear their ribbons for male and female officers and non-commissioned officers to include how they would wear formal dress, the miniature medals, uh, and how honor guards would wear the medals, and the fact that the honor guards are the only ones authorized the anodized medals. Uh, there's a good little section here on how uh, veterans or retirees can wear their medals afterwards uh, on formal occasions or just on a shirt sometimes. Higher history of Air Force ribbons, medals, and awards is shown here starting with the Medal of Honor, and it traces every military medal and ribbon awarded in the Air Force to include those from the United Nations and in NATO, as well as uh, the more commonly awarded foreign medals. Then what is basically the Rosetta Stone of the book, which is really sort of a key focal point, let's, let's say, for example, that uh, your grandfather uh, had this ribbon rack or you wanted to know what it is. Well, it's very easy. You would start always the highest decoration goes first in the order of precedence. There it is, the Silver Star. And the next is a Legion of Merit. And the next one is Distinguished Flying Cross with two oak leaf clusters and the Purple Heart. The Meritorious Service Medal the Air Medal with two silver oak leaf clusters. And then I'll show you in just a minute how you can tell what these all are. And it goes all the way through to showing uh, the Army Good Conduct Medal, which then kind of gives you the key. You kind of, because you read the introduction, you now see, well, okay, here's a Korean Service Medal. So he Korean was Service it. Medal. So he served in Korea. Vietnam Service Medal with... Three campaigns. United Nations Service Medal. Every one of these ribbons is shown here. And you can then easily, if you want to know more detail, jump all the way to the back, say on his Purple Heart. And here is a complete layout and display of the Purple Heart to include when they were issued with serial numbers and examples of how to display them and the certificate that comes with them. Uh, the same thing for other medals, but uh, uh, and then when a lot of Air Force members that served in other uh, branches of the service, they may have served in the Navy or the Army or the Marines before going to the Air Force, and this shows how they can wear the ribbons from the other branches. And there's a pretty extensive uh, chart here, and it lays it out in complete detail. This is very... Uh, Unique. I don't believe it's shown anywhere else, but it shows you, for example, the various attachments that go on all the different ribbons and what they're issued for. And it goes into detail to show you to, to include uh, the new V devices, R devices and C devices that have just been issued. And this is, you know, placement under combat conditions devices or remote combat devices. Um, um, then you get into the really heavy meat of a section of the book where it talks about the basic metals and it gives the details starting in the order of precedence in which they're ordered, uh, awarded the Medal of Honor up to the Air Force Medal of Honor after they quit using the Army one. This is probably the rarest of all Medal of Honors. And then section by section, if you wanted to know if you, someone in your family had received the Distinguished Service Cross, why well, you could just, I mean, not Distinguished Service Cross, Distinguished Flying Cross. You would go to the Distinguished Flying Cross. And you could cheat, by the way, instead of 
you could go to the index and uh, a really neat index and just look it right up. But this just shows you a full size, all the metals are shown in full size, both in bronze and gold plated, the miniature variation displays on how they would be uh, shown for World War II, Korea, Vietnam, etc. So all of the medals that they might have received to include, for example, uh, the Bronze Star, the uh, Purple Heart, a lot of detail on the Purple Heart, probably one of America's best known medals. Uh, the Air Medal, um, the Air Force casualties in World War II were second only to the infantry. So air crewmen earned a lot of air medals. A very handsome medal gives you a complete example of details and how they're displayed. So it goes through and to include all of the service awards. Really interesting, uh, for example, on the Prisoner of War Medal. Here's an example over here of the telegram that the wife received saying that he was missing in action. Uh, here is a postcard that the Red Cross let him send from Frankfurt. This is the German Stalag prisoner of war card and the pictures of him when he was shot down. And this was a report that he had to write when he was liberated. That Every prisoner of war had to write a report on how they got captured. Interesting. When he talks about bailing out and falling through the first two ice layers before opening his parachute. Really cool stuff. Uh, good conduct medal. All of the ribbons and other medals, campaign medals, Vietnam service medal, examples of how it would be displayed. Uh, Kosovo, Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, war on Terra, uh, something really unique, for example, is a section, after all of the American medals, there's a section on foreign awards that have been presented to U.S. Uh, personnel. And for example, let's say that you found this in your dad's affairs, effects, or your grandfather, and you said, what in the world is this medal? Well, it's Republic of Vietnam Air Force Distinguished Service Order that he received. Or let's say that you found another miniature medal that he had. And that might be, well, here it is. The Republic of Vietnam Air Service Medal. Pretty cool. Uh, all of the commonly awarded medals for World War II and Vietnam uh, by foreign governments are shown here. All of the United Nations ribbons that are authorized are shown here. All of the NATO medals. All of the foreign awards like uh, the Saudi uh, Medal for the Liberation of Kuwait, the Kuwaiti Liberation Medal, and even, and finally, the Republic of Korea War Service Medal uh, that wasn't awarded until 50 years after the Korean War. And examples of how they're displayed. So I think it's a, it's a wonderful book. It has a, a complete index uh, and all the references, uh, even commemorative medals that are popular uh, for different periods. Um, and it all comes beautifully packaged, printed in the United States, and a lovely cover, almost 200 pages, all in color, absolutely heavy duty paper. Uh, I don't think it could be done nicer. $29.95, uh, probably one of the best book buys around. So I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, I hope you had as much fun as I did looking through this new book on uh, the medals and ribbons of the United States Air Force. I think you'll find it uh, a very encouraging reference or just a complete guide to all of the medals and ribbons of the Air Force. And uh, you know, all you got to do is check out the Medals of America Press website or you can go on Amazon and uh, it's on Amazon Prime so you can get it shipped to you free. 
And on certain holidays and Veterans Day, uh, I even sometimes cut the price for a few days. So keep your eye out. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the show, give us a like. Uh, if not, just go buy a book. And if you can't afford the book, go to your librarian and tell her she needs to order it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, these things are fun. <laughs>